All right, welcome back to RTOD. Today, I'm gonna to be attempting to repair this US Divers Monitor 2 dive computer from the early 90s. Pretty typical dive computer you would see from the era, has contacts here for water, as well as these are conductive buttons. But this computer, like some other specific ones I could think of, has a non-user replaceable battery. Uh, it's a good thing because it ensures that this is completely watertight and can hold up to pressure because it's really just potting compound in there. But if a diver had to replace this, you'd have to send it away to an authorized service center. And if I remember, it was fairly expensive, 40 or $50 to get that battery replaced. So we're gonna to try to do that today with parts I found off of Amazon. Stay tuned. The parts we need for this repair are a 3.6 volt AA battery. Having leads pre-soldered just makes this an easier repair and some electronic grade silicone. Now, mind you, this isn't what they would have used, but this isn't going to be a primary dive computer, and I'm not even sure if I'm gonna dive with it yet. I'm gonna have affiliate links for both of these items below. All right, with the back off, we see where the battery is. It's on in this orientation on the right-hand side. The power leads go from the board through two layers of silicone. So you have this portion here, which the user or a service shop would not open, and then it goes into this side over here, and there's a clear, delineation line. So what we need to do is dig out this side. And the best way to do that is we're just gonna get a knife and start digging. Because I don't, I'm not even sure if I'm gonna dive with this, but even if I did, this would not be my primary dive computer. And due to its age, this is not gonna be your primary dive computer. So I'm okay just putting any sort of silicone in here just to get the battery installed. I wanna take this moment to say that diving is incredibly safe, but you should never put your life in the hands of vintage equipment. This is a collector's piece. If I dive with it, I will have a modern dive computer, and that modern computer is what I will rely on. Using vintage or older dive gear can be a lot of fun, but you need to take precautions. After all, every piece of scuba equipment is life-sustaining equipment and it helps ensure that your number of dives equals your number of surfaces. So we removed the compartment of all the old silicone. There's actually a little bed down here that they put down first and then put the battery in it. That way it kind of sat and held in place before they topped it off. We'll recreate that when we put the new battery in. Surprisingly, this has a date code of February 2011, so this computer was in service a lot later than what I expected. I probably got this in 2015, so you know, four years, assuming they dove it regularly, that's actually really good. So what we'll do, we'll um, desolder the leads on here, and then we'll put the new battery in. How cool is that? So as soon as I put that second contact on, it just sprang to life. Actually scared me a little bit, gave me a long beep. <laughs> I wasn't sure what was going on. But um, here we go. You know, it's back running again. These contacts, um, it's because it's a dive computer, right? You don't have physical buttons on it. Um, these are just resistive contacts. If you just lick your fingers real quick, you can go through menus, but I'd have to look at the uh, manual to see what I can do with no dives on it and on top of the water. But because they're conductive, as soon as this gets in the water, it'll actually turn on. So it'll time off probably 30, 45 minutes. So what we're gonna do now, we're just gonna flip it over, we're gonna pot it, let it dry, and then once it's dry and the display is off, we're gonna go soak it in water and see if it'll turn on. It might not, uh, at least some modern dive computers like mine, you can put it in the water, it won't do anything until you get to five feet or so. Um, and it's February in New Hampshire, so I'm not getting any actual water right now. So we'll just try it in the sink. Well, nothing's easy and nothing ever goes according to plan. As I was settling the battery in here, I heard the computer beep and beep and beep, telling me that it was power cycling. And somehow I cut the wire, the negative lead going through here. 
So what I had to do is cut into this portion of the potting, pull the wire out, and then attach this <laughs> bodge wire onto it. But it works, I tested it and it worked. Uh, and I sealed everything up. Um, I'm considering it, you know, degraded as far as watertight integrity goes, but this is a vintage piece. Uh, if I dive with it, it's gonna go no deeper than 20 feet. I don't wanna put this in jeopardy and, um, you know, it's just, it, it's more cool to have. I, I'm not gonna use it as a, as a dive computer anyway. And if I do dive with it, I'll be having a modern dive computer as my primary source anyway. The downside to all of this is this protective backing doesn't really want to stay on it, which is fine because the backing is here if you use this clip and you had this clipped onto your chest, onto your BCD, but this is going to live in a boot so the back isn't going to be openly exposed anyway. So without further ado, let's uh, dunk test it, see if it turns on and see if we get any bubbles coming out. Look at that. So actually it looks like it looks like it's actually in dive mode right now because it's showing no stop. And yeah, and dive mode went away. So now it shows it's in surface mode again. So it actually does know it is underwater, not just that I'm touching two of the contacts. How cool is that? This is the first time I've seen this computer running. Uh, when I bought it, it was dead, but I really bought it because of the regulator setup that it came with. And it doesn't look like we get any water intrusion on the back. And I didn't see any bubbles. That is so sweet. Now it's going through all of the dives. So we see memory and it's going through dive three. Can I change these? I'll have to, I'll have to dig up a manual. I'm having a hard time finding a manual for this one. Um, the M2 Plus was far more popular. <clears throat> and that's a, a much easier manual to find. So... Wow, that is really, really slick. I think once the weather clears up, I might have to take this down to the lake and give it a shot. Well, I think that's gonna wrap up this video. If you like what we're doing over here, like and subscribe, and tell your friends.